Once more, I bring greetings unto the name, or through the name of the Lord Jesus. And we've been in the different books of the Bible, but today I want to bring us into the book of the Apostle Peter, as he was writing unto believers. Uh, it's found in 1 Peter, back chapter 1, in just a few verses, verses 13 through 25, and then uh, let me read it for you, and then we'll see where Peter was in, in his walk with him. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting with Verse 13. It says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you called on a father who judges each man's work in partiality, live your lives as stranger here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not the perishable things, such as silver and gold, that you are redeemed from the enemy way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, Love one another deeply from your very heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seeds, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass weathers, the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord will stand forever. This is the word that was preached unto you. Will you pray for me? Our Father in heaven, Lord, what precious words that was recorded many, many centuries ago, Lord. But oh, we thank you for the beautiful words that was recorded even before people. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but your word still stands forever. May that word, Lord, that came from you through the apostles and through the teachings, may it now, Lord, be moved again in this sanctuary and into each heart. And may you be glorified. And may that imperishable word be glorified in you and him. Precious name of Christ, in my weakness I pray. Amen. You know, when we go through the Bible, uh, as I began <coughs> to study uh, the Apostle Peter, I began to know that Peter and Paul had a lot in common. Peter was one of the ones that was close. Peter, James, and John was one of the ones that was on the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember, Peter is the one that cut the ear off of the servants as they began to, or tried to arrest Jesus. Peter is the one that denied Jesus, even from a little servant girl, but he was reinstated. And, and that's kind of the way humanity is today, as we fall we're reinstated for that, for that walk that is before us. 
And Peter's the one in Acts chapter 10 that, remember Peter was, was a Jew and he, he believed that only the Jews was chosen for God's holy word. And then we read in Acts, when Peter, remember, it says, Peter was hungry, and he, and he fell into a trance as they was preparing the food, and he had this vision of, of an angel dropping a sheet down from heaven. And as he opened the sheet, he said, take, and here's the word that we need to not forget, take, kill, and eat. Peter said, no, no, Lord. All my life, I've never ate forbidden food. And three times this happened. said, take, kill, and eat, take, kill, and eat. Peter each time said, no, my Lord, not so. And then as he was still in that, with the Holy Spirit, there was a knock at the door. And remember, Cornelius sent some servants to go. And as Peter went down, he said, what do you want? He said, we're looking for Peter. We have been sent. And Peter said, come in, I've been waiting for you. They ate the meal, and the next day they went to Cornelius' house, and they was all Gentiles. And he said, ah, oh, the vision, the word from God. No longer is it just the Jews, but he sent me to give the word to the Gentiles. Kind of like Paul. Paul said, I was, I was called. We back up. Just a couple of verses in 1 Peter. First one said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect. That's, that's you. That's, that's each, each one that's called by God. Strangers in the world, scattered throughout. Then he tells them who he has, and he says, but, listen to verse 2, if you have it there in front of you. Now, we can't get all giddy in this. This puts a responsibility on each one. This letter is to who has been called <coughs> according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. You have been called and chosen by God. If you let that settle in a while, there should be some goosebumps starting to approach your arm or up the back of your neck. We are God's chosen people, but there is a an uplift here that comes not with pride. There could be no greater compliment, but yet there's no greater privilege in all the world today as we look around than to be chosen That's every one of you. But now, special chosen describes special people. If you go through the fruit aisles at probably any supermarket, you'll see people picking up watermelons and tapping them, turning them. <coughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm choosing just the right. Army generals handpick the ones that's under them. You are chosen. So if God would be a general of the world today, he handpicks. Every president handpicks his cabinet. You're chosen for some greatness. And we have the honor of being specially chosen the Gentile people by God. But as that choosing, we also need to know that with the challenge comes some of the greatest responsibilities to this side of heaven. You see, God, without fail, no exceptions, always chooses his people for service. The honor which he gives unto each one of us is that of being used for his purpose and his purpose only. It is precisely that that the Jews failed. 
And we have to see to it, each one of you, myself included, and especially here at Salem, that that tragedy that the Jews did is, is not of like failure and doesn't mark our lives. I know some congregation that has went through spitting contests over nothing. And I know some that's 50 years ago, and they're still battling today. Everyone's dead, gone. And Peter says, prepare your minds to be self-controlled. That's what walking in Christ is all about. That's what walking in the truth is when you began to walk. Jesus, remember he was before the scribes and the Pharisees. And they was trying to show within themselves how, how pure they was. Let me see if I can find it. And I think it's in Matthew 24. 23. And they're walking around so pure, they got their robes on and their tassels are hanging. But Jesus sees beyond their flesh and their robes and their tassels. He sees the inside. He said, on the outside, you're all clean and pure. But on the inside, you're like whitewashed tombs. Nothing but dead bones. You see, Christians need to look on the outside. And I've heard it say, you know, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? What Peter is saying, God chose you. You've been called for his purpose. Why are you continuing to live the life that he called you out of? He's saying there's an ignorance in the world. Christians, we need, we must take that challenge and that responsibility. First of all, you're living in exile. Every believer. This isn't it, my children. But you can live in it, which is heaven, here on earth. You might be a sojourner. But that doesn't mean you, you can't have all the privileges of heaven. You see, the outside needs to match. Inside. Our daily walk, wherever that walk might take you. And sometimes, does it mean come? Well, sometimes, yes. It does mean this outer robe, clothes. When Peter spoke unto them, he had a desire within his heart tell the Gentiles first of all his mind I'm sure went to Isaiah 53 familiar to every believer it is a picture of that suffering servant remember he grew up he came as a child but, but then he suffered as a servant And then Peter's mind, I'm sure, went to that memorable night and he was brought out of slavery of Egypt. He said, you was once enslaved by this world. But it was because of Jesus' blood, where they put the blood above the doorpost and the mantles. But he said, Jesus is that eternal purpose for your life.
And here's the one that I just about jumped clear out of my seat when I, the Holy Spirit gave to me. I didn't. Flesh and blood didn't give this to me. It was before creation that he predestined you. Do you know what that means? He thought of you, every one of you, before the creation of the world. Let that settle in. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created. 1 Peter 1.20 says, before the beginning, God chose a special people. He chose Jesus for the redemption of the world. He was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in these last times for your sake. What a precious truth. Isn't it awesome that God didn't see his people falling away and he had an executive meeting and said, oh, we've got to do something. Peter says it goes way back before creation. You see, God has a connection with you. Throughout the Word of God, it's seldom separate the cross, the suffering servants, from the resurrection. The giver of life, death cannot touch. As he brings hope each day. Peter says, nothing. So does Paul. So what are the characteristics of, of ignorance? Peter says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires of this world when you live in ignorance. Probably each one of us can, can answer that. First of all, a Christ, ignorance is a Christ-less life. Peter looked around the pagan world that he was ministering to, and it was haunted because they did not know God. And they began to grope almost as a society today. They began to put on a badge of honor simply because they, they didn't know God. And they began to live like that. They began to be dominated by the desires of within. Remember I said the, the inner and the outer has to line up with God's will. And what was happening as you began to study this way deeper than the ink in that, that time in history that the homosexual practice had become so common that it was described as normal nature. 2020 USA. And Peter says don't be conformed to the evil desire. He's saying, don't fall off the wagon. So we have some approaches, I believe, that Peter gave us, and Paul gave us, Hebrew gave us the last three weeks. And we must, we must allow, first of all, we must allow the Holy Spirit to shape us into our man. You can't do it without it. Don't even try. Don't even be like as many saying, well, just... Just hold tight, and I'm not even going there anymore for a couple of weeks because you know where I'm going. Just stand firm, tie a knot in it. 
Get the Bible. It's, it's full of riches and insights. And it is. Can't take that away. Not making light out of it. Just keep reading resources about Jesus. Not making light out of it. It's truth. But what happens is we, we fail. We meeting His chosen people. Not talking about salvation. But anyone who seeks this desire to walk with God. You have the Holy Spirit and you begin to pray for passion. You want Jesus. Don't think anything else about it. And that, my child, is what Peter is saying. You have all these evil desires and you'll do anything to get it. You won't sleep at night because your mind is wanting, and there's nothing, you know, I'm not even going there with wanting this or that on earth. But the trouble is, we fail, I fail sometimes, just to wait in the very stillness of God's presence. Scripture says we're not on His time to just because He chose us before the creation. And as we call out to Him, He'll begin to give us some instructions. First thing you have to do is simply wait. Not get your Bible and read. Not pray. Not call a special meeting. That's all part of it. And turning to scripture and prayer and learning to wait is, is all part of it. But the greatest source is get rid of the noise within ourselves. We are so, I am so, preoccupied with the clamor that this world tries to rob our attention. Our bodies demand care. Our bodies demand satisfaction. Put simply, we are loud, even when we say nothing. God seeks to move in us in a quiet way. Remember Elijah? He just performed the great miracle on Mount Carmel. Killed all the prophets of Baal. And then he looked within himself and said, Oh God, I'm the only one left. God let him leave that for a little bit. And he went out in the desert and helped him. God says, Hey, you've got a long journey ahead of you. You need to eat some spiritual food. And you need to eat some solid food for this stomach. He fed him. Elijah fell back to sleep. He woke up. He said, The angel said, Here, eat some more. Because I'm telling you, the journey's long. <coughs> And he went another 40 days in the desert, went to the cave and hid. And God says, what are you doing here? Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm just the only one left. God says, and here's where we need to be. He says, go out of the cave that you're, you're living in. And you just go out and stand and wait for me. That's all he told me. Didn't tell him to pray. Didn't tell him to open up the scribes. Didn't tell him to look within, look without. He simply said, you go out and you stand and wait. There was God. God seeks to move in the quietness of our hearts. I pray today that in his presence, and in his treasure. With his presence, and you truly only want him, will override every moment in your life. It'll supersede everything in your life. Don't spend all your energy trying to solve all your problems. Don't try to overcome or 
eclipse a problem. The Bible teaches spiritual rest enters your inner being. When you just want It's not striving. It's not working. It's not in some of the Psalms as beautiful as they are. It is in the quality of the oneness of you said, me or stand, and just worship God. I had a clock in my bathroom. It's right there. The I get out of the shower. So I'll pretend whatever. And when the battery begins to go low, that clock goes tick, 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 and nothing happens. The hand just goes tick, 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 never moves. Shut your eyes and you can just hear it tick. But it never moves. So many Christians are like that. We're ticking. But we're not moving. I am like that sometimes. Until I found the intimate presence of Christ. And I didn't find it. Until I shut out all. You know the story. Wasn't because I was pain free, worry free, debt free. It's because I wanted Christ more than anything. And there I found that pearl. Having Him supersede. Our Father in heaven, oh Lord, what precious truth. <clears throat> Father, I pray for each one now, Lord, that has heard your message, felt your call. Lord, may we, as it like, to stand in silence at the opening of our cave and hear that silent whisper. Go forth to serve. Powerful name of Christ, we pray.